Welcome to the Gospel of Luke today, and let's see what happens with Peter. We're at Luke 22, verses 31 to 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. So we all have heard of the betrayal of Peter. In the moment of testing Peter, in this moment of testing, Peter failed. But let's look at this a little bit. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Uh, that's a very interesting statement by Jesus. Jesus is telling Simon Peter that the, that the devils are ready to destroy you. If they were allowed to, they will utterly, absolutely, and completely destroy you. And he says, uh, notice what he said. Yeah, Peter said, I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready. But Jesus says, you're not ready. You're not ready. If you're left to yourself, you will be destroyed. Left to ourselves, we'd be destroyed. But Jesus said to Peter, and he would say it to us as well, Yes, the devil wants to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And in John 17, Jesus prayed for us. And I'm sure many times Jesus prayed for us, even though we're, you know, 2,000 years out from there. He prayed for those who would believe on, on him in the future. And he certainly knows us all before he came and took his human, human form. He certainly knew us all ahead of time because God can exist. While he enters the stream of time, he also exists outside of time. Also, and so he would know you long before you ever came into existence. Very interesting thought. But Jesus has prayed for Peter so that he wouldn't fail. And that is the difference, right? The devil wants to do A. Jesus says, you're not going to do A. Instead, I'm going to pray for Peter. And so B is what results because Jesus prayed for Peter and because Peter is surrendered to Jesus. At the end of the day, if Peter didn't surrender to Jesus, the prayer of Jesus for him would be futile. Yes? But Peter surrendered to Jesus. And so even though he's got some ups and downs here, and you and I have had some ups and downs, we are becoming more and more steady in our walk with God day by day. So when you feel like you're ready to falter, you feel like you're ready to collapse and miss the spiritually fail, remember Jesus has prayed for you. How can you fail? Jesus has prayed for you. Peter, you know, Peter wasn't the, the world's steadiest guy, and yet God got him through. And you and I might not be the world's steadiest Christian people, but you know what? Because Jesus wants us more, he, he's taken the step of praying for us, just as I'm sure he, as he prayed for Peter. So let's pray together now. Father in heaven, we want to pray back to you. We thank you for Jesus. We pray that our hearts will be right. We pray that the prayer of Jesus will be effectual for us because we receive Jesus, because we want you to transform us. We want to be changed people. So, Lord, do it. Do it. I mean, without further delay, Lord, help us to be completely surrendered to you and then do it. Now, Lord, we know the devils want us and we know that you want us too. So be our helper, be our deliverer in these crazy times. And we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. All right, friend, may the God of heaven and earth, may he be encouraging to you. He has prayed for you. He wants you to succeed spiritually. So there's nothing in the way, nothing in the way. May our stubborn wills be presented fully to him.